Welcome to the Root Cause Revolution podcast with functional and integrative nurse nutritionist and energy medicine practitioner, Audrey Christie. Are you ready for the sleep remedy, the part two to the sleep episode? I know you are. If this is your first time joining me, welcome. I'm Audrey. I'm a root cause clinician, and I specialize in helping you to stop masking symptoms and start healing for good, for good, for from all the things, chronic symptoms, autoimmune disease, can't get those last weight off, struggling with hormones. We can work through it. I work with people who have tried it all and still aren't at the level of health and wellness that they desire and more importantly, deserve. So if you're done with Band-Aids and ready for real solutions, I am here to help. You are in the right place. All right. In the last episode, we talked about the importance of sleep. We talked about how when your body is sleeping, you are working to restock hormones, process toxins, repair tissue damage, rearm the immune system with those vital white blood cells, and eliminate the effects of stress. And last, but certainly not least, process those big, heavy emotions. Um, I used the analogy of a grocery store, right? I said that, you know, if you pull up to the grocery store at night, while they're open, but like, after dark. Um, from the outside, when you pull up, it doesn't look like much is going on. And sometimes it even looks like the store is closed. There might be one or two cars out front. But when you go in and you grab whatever you need on that midnight run, the store is actually bustling with workers. There's people cleaning and restocking and straightening and getting everything ready and set for the next day. When you sleep, right? <laughs> when you sleep, the same thing's happening in your body. And when you don't sleep, either by your own intervention by design or by by a body that is stuck in inflammation or imbalance, um, then you are unable to reclaim all of that healing that happens every single night. So what I like to have you do Um, is go through all of the things that we talked about last time. So a good sleep hygiene routine, making sure that we're not having caffeine late in the day, making sure that we're not on blue lit screens. So handheld devices in particular, um, but also bright lights after the sun sets. But sometimes that's not enough, right? Sometimes we still need some remedies, particularly to get over the hump, because it can be a little bit of a vicious cycle. So we're going to talk about exactly what to do if you have trouble falling asleep, if maybe you fall asleep easy, but you wake up in the middle of the night, if um, you have hot flashes, if you have full fledged insomnia, if you have stressful thoughts that you can't get out of your brain at bedtime. And we're even going to talk about sleeping or not sleeping after you've had a cocktail or two. So firstly, let's dive into exactly what to do if you have trouble falling asleep. Even if you have done the improved sleep hygiene and you have to give it a chance, right? You have to give it more than a day or two. Um, But sometimes you still need a wee little help. Oftentimes I see this problem come up either because uh, they have used anti-inflammatory medications for an extended amount of time. They have used steroids for an extended amount of time. It could even be over-the-counter stuff like Advil or ibuprofen. Um, I see it often with people who have been on high blood pressure medication, Uh, I see it, people who have imbalanced cortisol levels and imbalanced blood sugar levels, people who are having caffeine too late in the day, people who are doom scrolling on their phone all the way up until they try to go to bed. Now, the quick fix here is melatonin. Melatonin has to be dosed very, very carefully. um, And it has to be dosed in a very timely manner for it to work. Now, I am a fan of people using melatonin for a short period of time. Uh, Used to, I would say that melatonin will stop your pineal gland from making its own melatonin and you'll effectively be dependent on it for sleep forever. Now, there's some new information that is not put out by people who sell melatonin uh, that tends to point to that melatonin may be a hormone that doesn't fall into the category of um, depleting your body's ability to produce it if you take it long term. That being said, we still want to use the lowest dose possible and we want to dose it as follows. Now, this is not medical advice. I'm not telling you, uh, I'm not curing any disease here. I am not your doctor. Um, But if I were going to dose it for myself, if I could not fall asleep, if I had trouble falling asleep, then I would be sure and take it at 
sunset. A lot of people mess up and they take it at 10 p.m. when they're going to bed and they wonder why it won't work. Melatonin is meant to be taken at sunset. Now, if you're 30 minutes early or 30 minutes late, no big deal. Um, But take it as close to sunset as possible. And that changes depending on the time of year that it is. Uh, You may also need to take a second small low milligram dose about 30 minutes before you're going to lay your head on your pillow. Now, if you take the melatonin and you still play on your phone and do all the things, chances are it's not going to work. Okay. If you have to be on a screen or a phone, get yourself some blue light blocker glasses. Um, now, a lot of another thing people complain about a lot with melatonin is that it makes them feel groggy or hungover or gives them wicked nightmares. Usually that is a sign that your body needs to detox, right? That is melatonin telling you that you need to detox. Now, the next option, uh, if you have, if you don't have trouble falling asleep, but you tend to wake up in the middle of the night and can't drift back to sleep easily, then you may have an insufficient supply of melatonin throughout the, no- the night. So taking melatonin before bed probably won't help much, but using something like the precursor to melatonin or 5-HTP may help. The body creates melatonin from serotonin, and we make serotonin from an amino acid called tryptophan, and 5-HTP is the precursor to serotonin. In a healthy body, it can be converted to melatonin a few hours later and help to create that steady flow of melatonin that you need to allow you to sleep more deeply, more soundly, and without interruption. Now, if this is you, then I would suggest you jumping on the schedule. Unfortunately, right now, I think we are scheduling for May, like the mid, mid-May uh area, but definitely check the schedule. See if you can jump on the schedule because there is some quarterbacking that is required um, with 5-HTP with contraindications or reasons when and why it's safe or not safe to use. The next uh, sleep issue I hear about a lot is having trouble with overnight hot flashes, particularly, um, you know, it's kind of a catch-22. We can call it normal uh, for people who are perimenopausal. Uh, or menopausal, but it's not. And unfortunately, people that are not perimenopausal or menopausal often have hot flashes related to hormone disruption, particularly cortisol rhythm, um, well before even the quote unquote normal hot flash age and, and time period of your life happens. Now, if you have hot flashes uh, later in the night, right? Like two to 4 a.m. That usually means that your cortisol, your stress hormone levels are very, very high. Now they, um, and what they're actually doing is rising to meet the day early and aggressively. So that means that there is a pattern that the body is adapted to of expecting stressful circumstances. So swift, significant, sustainable stress relief is key to fixing this. I recommend doing heart math, heart math sessions uh, working on active stress mitigation, taking aptogen- adaptogenic herbs for this, and additionally, making sure that your blood sugar is balanced because that will also trip your uh, cortisol levels. So adaptogenic herbs, you might consider holy basil, ashwagandha, magnolia, and L-theanine. Now, if your hot flashes are earlier in the night, especially if you wake up hungry, then that really is an indicator that it is a blood sugar issue. Um, And you should not be having a blood sugar issue during your body's normal fasting time. But essentially what happens is your body sends a surge of epinephrine to force the body's blood sugar back up to an acceptable level, which is great for your blood sugar, bad for your sleep. Sometimes this can be solved by a little snack at bedtime, a little bit of protein, a little bit of happy, a healthy fat, Um, maybe an apple with some honey and half an avocado or something like that. This will probably temporarily fix the problem, but we definitely need to do some blood sugar testing, either in the form of a continuous glucose monitor or uh, blood sugar um, monitoring with a finger stick and you monitor it several times a day um, to really get to the root of the issue. Now, if you have full-fledged insomnia, then I recommend a combination of melatonin and 5-HTP. Uh, it can be a super helpful solution when combined with the sleep hygiene steps that we talked about in the last episode. If you're not doing the sleep hygiene, don't expect any of these to work well. Um, it is still a temporary solution, but if we can get you going, get you some sleep with melatonin and 5-HTP, then we can start 
fixing all of the root causes. Sometimes we have to use supplementation as a band-aid in order to bridge us to our healing path. Now, if you are someone who has trouble sleeping because you have all the stressful thoughts on your brain at bedtime, um, or you can't sleep during pain, then usually we see this as an imbalance of two neurotransmitters, glutamate and GABA. Glutamate is an excitatory transmitter and GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So a reliable solution here is to take some adaptogenic herbs. You can do that about two hours before bedtime and then take calming herbs one to two hours before bedtime. I have explored so many different blends with patients and I tend to find that ashwagandha and holy basil works best um, combined with valerian root in some extreme cases. Um, But holy basil, ashwagandha and or valerian root are really long standing herbal remedies for this situation. Um, Again, you want to be uh, be sure that you aren't ingesting a surplus of glutamate um, in your diet. Otherwise, we're just we're fighting a losing battle. Now, let's talk about drinking, right? If you have trouble sleeping after you've had a cocktail or two, <laughs> that is not uncommon. You're not broken. Um, alcohol is poison, period. And, and you know, it's kind of becomes a catch 22 because I have people who want to use the alcohol to reduce the stress um, and to kind of unwind or blow off steam after a hard day. And then they either can't go to bed or they go to bed and they quote unquote sleep for a few hours and they're awake in that three to 4 AM. What usually is the problem there. It's a rebound excitatory action of glutamate that happens later in the night. The sedative effects of alcohol increase your GABA in the early sleep hours. And then once it's processed through your liver, and that's a little bit different timing depending on the person, but you're wide awake um, or restless. And that's that glutamate, right? Now, if alcohol is causing you this problem, then your best bet is to set it aside. It was a problem for me, uh, you know, sleep rest, along with a lot of other problems that uh, were causing physical health issues with alcohol. And I gave up alcohol over four years ago and haven't looked back. Um, If for some reason you feel like that's not an option, then I highly suggest finding someone to support you through getting rid of alcohol. But if it's just something that you don't want to do, then you can add some calming neurotransmitters and amino acids at night. Taurine or L-theanine can help to increase GABA um, and increase its ability to bind and promote that inhibitory state and allow you to rest. Okay. So I hope that those things point you in the right direction. You can check the show notes for all the links. I'd love you to leave a rating or review um, and let me know that you are enjoying this. It also helps us get the information out to more people. You, you have to know this isn't a uh, all inclusive way to address sleep. But just know if you don't have sleep, that is one of the first things that we have to address to heal your body, whether it's from, you know, a physical chronic injury or issue or health problem, an acute chronic or an acute injury or health issue, um, or, you know, literally anything else. Sleep is one of those foundational things. So I hope you have a magical and restful rest of your day and night and use today to leave your world however you can a little bit better than how you found it when you got up this morning. See you next time. Thank you for listening to the Root Cause Revolution podcast. Be sure and subscribe on your favorite podcast provider. Ratings and reviews are always appreciated.